525,600 minutes, 525,000 moments so dear, 525,600 minutes, how do you measure, measure a year? Measuring a year. For the past 20 years, I've written a letter describing my family's year. We've taken a photo, and my daughter has drawn a picture. And we made this card and sent it out to all of our family and friends. And then every year, I put it into an album. So this year, I looked back over all these cards in that album. And I looked at all the ways my years had been measured. There were births and deaths and illnesses. There was visits from family and friends and vacations and accomplishments. And there were the wonderful antics of children. But when I looked back on these cards, I could see that underneath all these happenings, there was so much more of which I did not write. There were shifting relationships and shifting emotions. There were internal struggles and triumphs and times of connection. Like the time I stood on the cold sand and watched the sandpipers scurrying around. And the time I looked into my friend's eyes and it felt like I saw her soul. So now I see that around and within these affairs of the day, there was love. It was always there. It had always been the glue, the mystery, and the meaning. 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a year in the life? How about love, measuring love? So on this New Year's Day, let us reflect how we can increase this experience of love in our lives, this love that is always present. Let us consider what would we like to release? What would we like to receive? And how can we rebuild our inner and outer life with more love? Well, for me, this is way more than a New Year's activity. This is the way I healed through chronic pain. And it is the process that kicks my rear end a lot of the time. For me, this process begins with an internal rumbling. And sometimes I feel shaky or destabilized. And this shaking is usually happening in my life at the same time. And something on the outside is usually triggering this internal unease. So to feel comfortable again, I have to often release something that no longer serves me. And sometimes it's on the outside, and it's a job or a relationship. But sometimes it's on the inside, and it is a habit a buried emotion, an old way of thinking, or a deep-held belief. When I release this restriction, I feel like I can expand and let in things that are more life-giving and loving, and sometimes my body feels better too, and I move and I breathe with more ease. In this new place, I have energy and joy to create something new in my inner or outer life. And it is never over. This process continues over and over, and as soon as I feel stable, I'm challenged again, and sometimes it is that same old issue. At first, I thought I had moved right back to where I began. But then over time, I could appreciate that I revisited this same stuff from more and more awareness. And this is how I grow. So today, consider what would you like to release, receive, and rebuild. 
Your measures may be concrete or abstract. They may be internal or external. But rest assured that whatever comes up for you today is unique and it is perfectly right. So a couple years ago, I wrote a little metaphor about this process, and I thought perhaps it could be a visual that can guide our introspection today. It begins with a rumbling of the soul. Sometimes it is a gentle tremble, and sometimes it is an earthquake that rocks my very foundation. The shaking crumbles, the stiff, and stagnant, and the more we allow, the more we shake loose. Light can then peek through the cracks and the rubble, and using this new light and space, we can now rebuild, this time with bricks of love.